So uh, I go by Jay Berman on GitHub and Matrix. So today, I'm going to be talking about Monero's light wallets as they exist today and as they would exist in a proposed uh, future upgrade that is currently in development, Seraphis slash Jamtis. It's been mentioned uh, quite a few times over the course of this weekend. Um, and so just a quick preface, how I'd uh, draw these analogies. So if a Monero full wallet where you are running your own node at home or wherever uh, and running your own light wallet server, running your own infrastructure and your wallet is pointing to your own node, uh, if that privacy is a fortress, then I would say this proposal and what I'm going to be talking about in this future proposed upgrade would be more like uh, a chain link fence with a barbed wire on top. So it's not uh, not as it's not the ideal. And then current light wallets, I'd say, are more like a gate that anybody can kind of walk into with like very very uh, virtually no protection. So. Today's light wallet. So basically in Monero today, um, and I'm sure anyone who has used Monero has experienced this, you have to scan every transaction in the blockchain since uh, you last opened your wallet in order to identify your transactions. And so let's say you haven't used Monero in a week or a few weeks, then you could end up sitting there while your wallet is downloading and scanning every single transaction. and uh, if you haven't used your wallet in a while, this is something that can take quite a bit of time. And so the idea with light wallets is that you can offload this scanning to a separate server called a light wallet server. It does all of this scanning for you. And then when, as soon as you open your wallet on your phone or wherever, uh, then it instantly loads and is ready to go without having to do that scanning. And so there are a couple uh, open source light wallet server implementations. One is by VT Nerd called Monero LWS, another by Monero Examples called Open Monero. And so basically how they work is they identify all of your incoming uh, Monero outputs uh, that you've received in the past, and they can see every single amount. And they're also able to deduce your spends every time you spent Monero with uh, high accuracy. So. The proposed upgrade is a light wallet server that's doing all the scanning that has no information as to the amounts of any of your Monero transactions and cannot definitively identify which outputs are yours received and spent with some caveats, which I will get into later on. So the plan is basically to go through how today's light wallets work, uh, what privacy users get, and what the experience is like, and then do the same thing for the proposed uh, future light wallets. So getting into today's light wallets at a bit of a deeper level. So they, so in Monero, we have a private view key, which is able to see all your incoming transactions when combined with your primary address. And so what users do is they send those two off to a light wallet server. And this light wallet server identifies all of the incoming transactions that uh, all the incoming Monero outputs a user has received and all of the transactions in which the user may have spent those outputs that they received in the past. And in this way, uh, when a user opens their light wallet client, it downloads all that information, instantly cryptographically determines which of those spends are actually users and the user's wallet is instantly ready to go. And so, the light wallet server technically is not able to cryptographically determine which uh, transactions the user has spent Monero in, but it's able to deduce that with uh, a very high level of accuracy. And then one level of privacy that light wallet server light wallets do technically currently get is that the server is not able to see the destination addresses that users are sending Monero to. So it's a gate, not not an open fence, but a gate, I'd say. Um, so. Sample transaction A. So I pulled these slides actually from my Monero Topio talk uh, last month. And basically, the idea of this example that I'm going to show is how light wallet servers with just the incoming view key are able to today deduce which transactions are the user spends with a high level of accuracy. Um, so here we have this example transaction A uh, that was back in August 2022, where the user received 10 Monero. Um, 
in in what we call an enote. So in Seraphis, um, so this terminology, uh, we're, we're we're referring to outputs as enotes. So they're virtually interchangeable uh, concepts. And so on the output side of this transaction, we've got the user receiving one enote two worth uh, ten Monero. And so this is all the incoming view key is able to see in this transaction. And then uh, we have here all of the transactions which have included that enote two as a potential input to their transactions in the future on the blockchain. So with Monero, uh, current implementation of ring signatures, uh, which have 16 ring members in them. So basically every single one of these transactions has a ring, which one of the 16 ring members in one of the rings in those transactions included that enote two that the user received on the input side. And so there's nine of them here, actually uh, 14 total. Uh, so. This one, we have this yellow one standing out as having a received enote uh, one worth 9.2 XMR. Uh, and so there's no other information about any of these other transactions on the blockchain. The only one that sticks out is this, uh, this yellow one highlighted here. So this is our, this is our suspect. And so zooming into, in onto this transaction, uh, we see the user received 9.2 Monero in this transaction and uh, taking some more numbers into account. So since uh, that's this the user's original transaction uh, transaction a we have we've had we've seen 4.6 million total transactions in the Monero blockchain and we were able to eliminate from that set of 4.6 million potential transactions where the user might have spent that enote to just this set of 14 um, and maybe any future ones. However, but in this 14 out of 4.6 million the user received Monero in just that one and so we can make a pretty highly educated guess that this 9.2 Monero that the user received in this transaction that included their original e-note as a potential spend, that that 9.2 Monero is likely the user's change. And so they probably spent uh, 0.8 Monero to somebody else, and that's what that e-note, that unknown e-note 2 is in that transaction. And this 9.2 Monero is the user's uh, receiving, and so the user likely very, very highly, like not probably 99% sure the user spent uh, 0.8 Monero on this transaction. And with that, we're able to deduce function. And this, this property kind of extends to uh, every single e-note essentially and how light wallets are able to deduce um, what the user spends are. So uh, here I uh, ran a simulation that, um, so the, the turquoise here, is basically all of the transactions. So I ran a simulation starting from when transaction A was included in the blockchain. All the transactions, uh, I, I simulated every transaction in the blockchain and ran the decoy selection algorithm for each and uh, noted which ones would have chosen that E note 2 from transaction A as a ring member in those transactions. And you can see in this turquoise line that has a, a so right, its peak there is right around 12. And then that red line there is what we actually saw, which was 14 transactions in the blockchain. So what basically to take the takeaway from this is that for most received uh, e-notes that a user is seeing that the light wallet server is also seeing, you could expect about 12 transactions to be spotted by the light wallet server that the light wallet server will then send to a light wallet client so that the light wallet client will then deduce which one of those 12 is the user spend. So, and that's basically how light wallets work today. So on the left side here, you have your uh, the receives and all of the, the the basically the minimal data that a light wallet would need to download in order to display this receive and display this information to a user in their wallet. Um, so there's about 200 bytes, uh, 200 bytes for every received e-note the user has gotten, and then for spends where the user might have spent that e-note in another transaction, the light wallet needs to send 112 bytes. And so there's just less data needed for the spends because uh, you don't have to determine which, like a received in that, in that you don't have to do the cryptography to determine uh, the amount in that transaction or if that transaction was actually received. So it's a, it's slightly less data, but it's a 112 bytes that the light wallet server has to send. And so the total amount for every expected e-note that a user receives, the user would essentially expect to download about 1.7 kilobytes per received e-note. So let's say, the and that scales linearly. So a user has uh, 100 e-notes that they've received. 
they would expect to download about 170 kilobytes worth of data, which is functionally instant loading and is why you see that you get the user experience of instant loading in a light wallet today. So the proposed future light wallets and that highlighting back. So the idea again is that the light wallet server is not able to see amounts and is not able to definitive, definitively identify which transactions the user received or spent their e-notes in with, their, with those caveats, which we'll get into. So functionally how they work. So a user will, instead of giving up the private view key to the server, they give up this new key we call a, a find received key. And this find received key, the light wallet server takes it, it scans the chain, and for every single transaction, it will identify e-notes which the user may have received and then might have spent. So it's, and in almost no, in some circumstances, the light wallet server is able to deduce it with 100% certainty, but in the general case, the light wallet server is not. Um, and so, and, and also, it is not able to decrypt any of the amounts in any of those e-notes. So basically, it just eliminates from the set of all e-notes to the smaller of which ones the user might have received or spent. So, uh, so basically, what it does, and I don't know how many people are familiar with this concept of view tags, which are currently implemented in Monero. Um, it basically taking that concept and applying it in light wallets as well. Uh, Basically, what happens is that find received key is picking up on one out of 256 e-notes in the chain, which may or may not have belonged to the user. And it's throwing away 255 e-notes that we know that the Lightwall server knows for sure do not belong to the to the user. And so basically all received e-notes are picked up definitively by the find received key, including change, which we'll get into. And so as a result, a light wallet client is only needs to download about 0.4% of the data that a full wallet currently needs to download in order to scan the chain. Full wallet being the GUI wallet today, CLI, uh, or Cake, or Monero, um, those are full wallets. And so this light wallet would, would need to download just 0.4% of the data that uh, that full wallet needs to download in order to recover user's balance. And so here's one little uh, engineering detail with light wallets that would be a bit different than how they currently exist. So an example of a zero change spend is when a user wants to take their entire balance from their wallet and sweep it out to another, another location. Um, and so basically they have zero change in that transaction, meaning that the view key wouldn't be able to pick it up and a find received key technically wouldn't be able to pick that up either. So. Uh, what we what we do is uh, we've proposed is that all wallets include a zero amount dummy e note that the find received key would be able to identify even in the circumstance where there is a zero change uh, e note. That way, that if you take your light wallet seed and you or a GUI, your GUI wallet seed and you and you mer and you uh, restore it in one or the other wallet, that uh, either wallet is able to, or if you take your GUI seed and you restore it in a light wallet, that light wallet would still be able to identify all of the user's transactions and recover the user's balance. And so this has a couple downsides worth highlighting, um, which is that you have every single wallet um, would need to technically do something that they wouldn't otherwise need to do in order to benefit, benefit light wallets. So GUI wallets would have to do, the GUI wallet would have to do something that uh, light wallets would benefit from that the GUI wallet wouldn't necessarily benefit from in order for the light wallet to pick up all spends in every type of transaction. Uh, and uh, also worth relevant uh, note is that all wallets today actually do have to do something similar, which is that they have to include a dummy amount in every transaction. So if you look at the Monero blockchain, every single transaction has at least two outputs in it. Um, and that is you know, to uh, ensure that all transactions are fungible that you can't, and you can't distinguish between a transaction that, might, that would be a zero change spend versus a non. And so to, in order to, uh, to achieve that, every single wallet includes a second one, even in the circumstance where it wouldn't technically need to. And so similar to that concept, uh, rather than just including some dummy e-note, the wallet would actually have to include one that the fine received key would actually need to pick up. Um, and then another downside to this is that the light wallet server would then be able to pick up on more transactions than it otherwise wouldn't. So that is also another thing uh, with today's light wallet servers. They technically, um, 
they don't get some extra information about some received uh, incoming transaction. But if we were to apply this, this concept, technically the Light Wallet server would be able to then pick up on these transactions when they otherwise wouldn't have. Um, but then the upside to this is that a light wallet doesn't need to download every single key image, key image from the server, which then brings us back to the pain point of light wallets needing to download a lot of data and then have to sit there waiting to scan. Uh, this way it can be pretty much instant, uh, or also the light wallet doesn't need to reveal their, their key images to the server in order to determine their spends. And there are, prob there are other, um, other ways that uh, this could be technically kind of worked around, but each of those has its own set of downsides um, where this approach seemed to have the, seems to have the least, uh, the least bad option, I'd say. So proposed light wallet user privacy. So getting into those, those caveats that I mentioned earlier. So there are circumstances uh, where either one of two options. One, the light wallet server can cryptographically identify transactions the user received with 100% certainty, and there are some circumstances where it can do that. And second, where it can accurately just guess which transactions are the users um, received e-notes and, uh, and spends via just analyzing what's going on on the server uh, and some other, some other caveats we'll get into. So, my view and my opinion is because of these, because of these pretty significant caveats to light wallets, um, users should still default to if they're not running, if, if you aren't running your own node, which you should be, everyone should be running their own node. If not, the default tech still shouldn't be uh, light wallets because these caveats are pretty severe. Unless you're running your own light wallet server, you should still not be defaulting to this, to this setup in my view. So the circumstances where the server can deter determine a user's in incoming e-notes with 100% certainty is if one, the user receives two plus e-notes to the same address, which is, you know, um, one of the things that Monero tries to protect users from at the protocol level uh, with stealth addresses, where you can't look on the blockchain and see, uh, you can't look up an address on the blockchain and identify a user's transactions like that, where you can with Bitcoin or Ethereum or any other, any other uh, non-privacy focused chain. Um, so unfortunately with this, you have this, that, that kind of gets rid of that concept where user, uh, if they're, if the light wallet server has access to this find receive key and the user receives two E notes, uh, the light wallet server is able to detect those incoming E notes with just that find receive key. There's nothing that goes on chain that anyone can look up, but that find receive key is enough to be able to say, okay, these are definitely received E notes. Um, and then the other circumstance there is if the light wallet server knows the user's address, it, it, it uh, ruins that, that concept as well. So even if the user has received one e-note uh, to the same, to one address, the light wallet server is able to see that if the light wallet server knows the user's address, which means that anyone who's transacting with you also has some level of responsibility of your, in your privacy to not go out and share that address with the world uh, either. Or you should, like, if you post your address on Twitter or whatever, you post it somewhere public, you would therefore be, be uh, the light wallet server would able to pick up on your receives using just your address. And so one way to alleviate this, um, that downside is that light wallets, and especially light wallets, should be randomly or generating unique addresses for users to use on each receive. Um, to try and alleviate that, it can't. It can't. It's not perfect. You know, if a user takes their address and just posts it somewhere, um, it's not going to help you in that circumstance. But as a default behavior, the wallet could generate unique addresses for every single receive. And Jamtis has uh, support. Jamtis, part of that proposed upgrade to Monero, has uh, support for random address generation, where current wallets um, have a bit more. Uh, it's, it's a bit more challenging to actually support that feature today. So, it's, so Jamtis would make it easier to be able to randomly generate addresses such that this could be avoided with, or at least mitigated to a certain extent. So, and then there's circumstances where the server can guess. So this prior slide is talking about uh, cir circumstances where the server can tell with 100% certainty, and then there are circumstances where the server can still just guess with uh, making accurate deductions um, First is, you know, if the server is just logging when the user signs in and requests their request their find received e notes, um, and then immediately goes request they, they want to construct a transaction. They re they fetch decoys either from the server or somewhere else, fetch fee information from the server or somewhere else, and then a transaction goes on chain right after that, where um, 
that has a that match that one out of two fifty six match, the server sees it. Uh, the server can likely pinpoint the user's transactions from that just by that. And I mean, if the user is just submitting their transactions straight to the server anyway, the server is going to be picking that up anyway. So there are these circumstances that are difficult to avoid where the server is going to get gather information where it can just deduce with analysis that the user's transactions are these. Um, so another is, for example, a user receives multiple change outputs in a single transaction, like uh, Monero's recent uh, POC change feature. So this concept is designed for, uh, so currently when you, when you receive some Monero, you can't spend it for 10 blocks. Um, and that has, uh, that offers reorg protection to users. And it's, it's something, it's a UX hurdle with uh, Monero that is um, just exists as it exists today. And as a result of that, um, users can get around it, get around it today is this, with this feature called pocket change, um, which spreads the, the change enotes in every transaction. So the user has multiple enotes from which to spend. And so if they've only received Monero in one transaction, for example, and then they go and spend that Monero in the future, rather than getting that locked uh, for, 20, for 10 blocks, 20 minutes, um, the spreading of the change enables the user to uh, spend um, without other enotes in their wallet without having to wait that, that, those 10 blocks. And it has its own set of issues surrounding privacy they're not going to get into now, but in this context, for light wallets. So if the user is receiving multiple enotes in a single transaction, that of course would be then be picked up by the find received key. Each of those would be picked up by the find received key. And so you're gonna have this one transaction which could have multiple receives and the chances of that are uh, pretty low, one over 256 times each. So the more enotes on the output side of the transaction are received, uh, the more statistical footprint you're leaving for the server to be able to tell, okay, this is a transaction in which the user received enotes. And this can tactically be mitigated with a change to the Jamtis spec, um, but it that has its own set of downsides as well, but I uh, won't get into that here now. So then another instance is that when the user has a transaction with multiple inputs, this is another circumstance where they're leaving another statistical footprint that would eventually be mitigated by full chain membership proofs, but as ring signatures ex exist today, um, and as they initially were proposed as part of Seraphis, that would be another circumstance where you're leaving another statistical footprint that is then um, leaving more analysis for the LightWallet server to do. And so basically, uh, my recommendation would ultimately still be to run your own Light Wallet server and not be giving up this information to uh, some other third party. So the proposed future Light Wallets uh, and how the download experience would be. So on the left side, um, you have all of the, the input, the information you'll need for the transaction level of each transaction. Um, that a user will need to download where the find received key picks up an e-note in that transaction. You have the hash uh, and then all the key images for each and then all that information. And then on the right side is the information on a per e-note basis. Um, and so for every e-note that the, that the find receive key identifies in every transaction, you'll need to download these bytes. And so this works out to, um, so since the last year, there have been around 14 million new outputs in the chain. And so the Light Wallet server identifies one out of 256 of those, which works out to around 54,500 outputs. And so simulating this with, with chain data over the last year um, and seeing what a Light Wallet would have to download under this proposed scheme works out to about 15.7 megabytes. And this does not, this, this is constant. So even if the user has tons of received e-notes, it's, it's not going to drastically alter how much they need to download. It's, a, it's, it's gonna stay constant at around 15.7, 16 megabytes. And so that is what the user would need to download if they haven't used their wallet in the past year. And they would only need to do it once, technically. And then from then on, it's just the future uh, few hundred kilobytes per day of whatever it is. And so that is still virtually pretty close to about instant. And that's if you haven't used your wallet in a year for tons of uh, internet connections and download speeds. But it's that, that varies for uh, depending on your, your bandwidth. So basic conclusion from this, I'd say, is that the... Light wallets in this proposal would offer these stronger privacy properties than light wallets of today with that very nice download user experience. And then it still has those caveats that, that I got into also. So 
that is the basic basic idea. And my recommendation too from this, and, and I mean, I'm particularly excited about this this feature in particular because I would want to run a light wallet server at home for family and friends and people within my in my community. Uh, that way, they're getting this you know this instant download experience and. Uh, I'm not going to be logging usage on on my server, but even if I were, I wouldn't be able to see any amounts. Uh, and so that is a, I think, a, a huge step up from today's light wallet servers. Where if I were running a light wallet server at home today, I would be able to get all this information just by looking into the database and seeing, okay, these received, these receives. I can pretty much guess a balance pretty easily with all that information. And so with this, I could run this light wallet server at home and not have any information about. Well, I have have very little information about family and friends, and uh, I think that that kind of model is um, a fairly scalable model for getting more people uh, uh, adopting using Monero. So, questions. <laughs>